do you find the will to fight back against a world that wants to keep you sedated, average, and stuck in place? Join us for the tools and strategies you need to create a life of abundance, discipline, and high achievement. This, this, is, this is the Tactical Empire with Jeff Smith. Welcome to another edition of the Tactical Empire. I'm here with Sean. How's it going, brother? What's happening? I mean, I wish you would have let me know that you shaved your head this weekend or else I would have knocked mine out. So we were twinning. I'm wearing the white hoodie. You're wearing the white t-shirt. We could have legit been twinning today. I got my beard growing out. There you go. You, know, you got your beard growing out. I got I got my blue blue light glasses on though. So yeah, we got to change yeah. up that. But you got to be good. a little bit I different. I love man. the shaved head, man. The shaved head uh, saves a lot of time. It does. It does. It does. Um, but I, I do have a thinning spot. So it's now at the length where you can tell that I'm thinning. So I just, it, it, I have probably like another four or five days before it's, it's a uh, clear cut that I need to shave again. There you go. Anytime I wake up with any sort of bed head is when I shave my head. Yeah. So it's like, getting, that's that's the that tipping point. point. Yep. It was very, very minor bed head yesterday. So I'm like, all right, I got a couple more days because I can just wear a hat when I go out. Uh, sure. wear a hat or a beanie it was six degrees this morning i still walked my dogs so you, you know i had my 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 russian furry hat on that uh keeps it nice and toasty sure <laughs> the wind wasn't blowing like six degrees and no wind is easy six yeah. degrees in wind which was like saturday sunday that was brutal yeah brutal. it was nasty everywhere yeah yeah well, you guys had a you guys had a big weekend, so I'm excited for you guys. But I know we got some. We know we got. Uh, you guys are going to dive deep on what the future looks like for you guys as your family starts to travel. But um, you know, I was listening this morning. We had a podcast drop, and right mm -hmm. at the end of the podcast, you said something that got us both jacked up, and we said that it would lead into the next podcast. We didn't have time to record it, so I'm going to bring it back into the forefront. I don't know if you remember what that was. No. He's shaking his head. No, here we go. Anyway, last podcast, we talked a little bit about leadership and, and, um, you know, investing in team members, but at the tail end of the, at the tail end of the podcast, you kind of brought up the topic and I've seen this, you know, because it's at the front of my brain now. Um, I've seen this in many of the mentoring groups I'm in with business owners. Again, this is not a business owner podcast, but we do have a lot of entrepreneurial people. And regardless if you're an entrepreneur or not, I think this is relevant. And the, and the topic came down, you said at the end there, it was like, you know, we're talking about buying back your time. We're talking about working on high level roles. We're talking about working in your zone of genius, your queen bee role, the thing that you're very skilled at that can add the most value into your company or into the world, whether it's the company you own or a company that you work for. And, uh, you know, I've been seeing people struggle with when they actually get to a certain point of success and they quote, buy back their time, which means they're going to be doing more of the high value roles, which means they're doing less of the low value roles. And some of these entrepreneurs, they don't fill their time, which is perfectly fine. But their response to that is, I'm bored. I'm getting mm -hmm. bored. I'm getting antsy. And you said something at the tail end of the last podcast is, it doesn't matter if your zone of genius takes four hours a week. The other hours are for you to prepare for those four hours. So even if you're only working four hours, it doesn't mean you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs. And you said you need to be working on yourself. You need to be working out. You need to be eating well, blah, 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 blah. And it, it fired me up because it comes back to this leading principle that we've spouted on the podcast numerous times, but we haven't dove into maybe why it's so important is that you are the asset. And that's when I listened to that podcast at ending this morning, when I was walking my dogs in six degree weather, I got fired up again because I'm like, I, I think we need to beat people's head today on why it's so important that, hey, you said, this was your statement, 40 hour work week is bullshit. Like you don't need to work 40 hours a week. If your work week is four hours, then the other hours are spent optimizing you, making you as good as possible. And it may be you, it may be working on your relationship, your marriage, your, your parenting, your whatever it is. But let me throw that ball back in your court and let's just run with that today, right? Let's just run with that topic today. Yeah, I, I think it's a tricky one and it needs a lot of context put to it, though, sure. because like younger audience or younger people in, in, in by younger, I don't necessarily mean age. It, it just means like earlier on in their journey in the journey. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm referring to is like at some point the work has to be done. Yeah. And, and like you have to you have to put in your time. And, and so what I'm saying about like 
people often check out when you say something like that, like you're going to work in your zone of genius and you're going to work four hours a, a week. Like anyone that's at that point in time has, has worked to get to that point. Mm. And, and there are levels to get to that point, levels of ascension, if you will, to where you started the journey and you were 60 hour weeks, 80 hour weeks, hundred hour weeks. And then you work to build space in, in your schedule with your team, with your resources that you have available to you until you had continued to level up where your effective hourly rate or your your time value is so high that that's where you spend most of your time. And it's not an easy thing to get to, but we often see people do this at the very early stages. Like you're not, so like, Let's even back it up a little bit further. So let's let's not be as ostentatious as saying they're working four hours a week and it's yeah. all in the zone of genius, right? Yeah. Let's say instead of working 50 hours a week, they have now carved themselves out space to where they're only needed 25 to 30 hours a week. That's where we first usually start seeing problems with entrepreneurs, right? Like it, it, at least me, because they're wired to work and hustle and do that that whole mindset mentality of like, if I'm not in the business from sun up to sun down, like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's a difficult thing to kind of detach your ego from and, and, and understand that there are people that are better than you and settling into your role as an actual builder, a resource builder. And, and, understanding that your priority is to build dynamic people around you that are going to slot in and be better than you at those particular skill sets. Yeah. And so I, I think the boredom thing is oftentimes like a cop out for people not wanting to do the deep work on themselves because we've spent so much time being busy in the business because we're talented about at what we do sales conversations, uh, retention, whatever it may be. Um, it, like for me, I'm a people person. So that part's really easy to me. Like the relationship, the conversational, the sales, like those things come very naturally to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's other areas of business that are a huge struggle to me when it comes to organization or admin or stuff like that. Uh, but we usually have a tendency to spend time where we're comfortable. And like, that's our natural default. So when when someone is making a little bit of money, their business has created a little bit of success. You, there's also a scarcity aspect to it that like you're afraid to go broke again. <laughs> and like, I'm not going back to that. And uh, yeah, because <laughs> we all have that little that little thing in our subconscious where we remember how hard it was and and, and how much of a struggle it was. And, and so a lot of that is really I mean, you work with a psychologist for this mm -hmm. type of stuff, right? I, I mean, I drill the mental game all the time because you have to understand and ask yourselves questions on like the deeper issues, right? The underlying issues of your thought process. So yeah. like if you find yourself to where you've built this amazing staff and you're trying to get into their way or you're trying to beat them into the office in the morning, you, you need to really check yourself and ask yourself why you're doing that. Because mm -hmm. it's it's a you issue. It's not a business issue or a team issue. It, it starts with you internally on like, why are you so uncomfortable spending five hours alone <laughs> or yeah. whatever it may be, right? Well, let's see where my, I mean, that, that was a big chunk, big bite to eat there. So let's just see where what, what spews out of my mouth. And and sure. look, I'm, I'm 35 years old, but I've owned a business since I was 23. So 12 years of business ownership and I've evolved over the past five or six years working with you to go into some different endeavors. And so I, I don't, I like that you said, let's like pull it back a little bit. Cause I don't want people to think that we're on this hard line of the four hour work week. We could have said the four hour work day, which is still 28 plus hours a week. And you said 20, 25 hours. So I think, like you said, there's different levels. I like to think about it, about it in terms of a spectrum. There are weeks where I work a handful of hours. There are other weeks where I work way more hours. Um, but I've also earned the right to choose how much I work. But this is the one thing you brought up at the end there, which is really like where my mind went as you were talking, as I work with a psychologist is with the spectrum that I think about is I had to recognize 
I'm not afraid of work. Let's just get that very clear. Even if you follow me on social media and I, I talk about my freedom of time, which that's another topic coming up on a podcast that I want to talk about is our definition of what freedom actually means. And I, I choose, you know, the ebb and flow of how much I want to work. What I had to realize as I've gotten older, a little bit more experienced, and let's just say a little bit more mature as I've gotten married and had kids was I had to recognize what I was addicted to. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of entrepreneurs that are actually addicted to work. I think that's the polite way of saying it because people will immediately say, well, that's not a bad thing. Are you addicted to, are you a workaholic? Like workaholism is an addiction and it's not a good addiction when you're framing it that way. Are you addicted even worse? Are you an entrepreneur that's addicted to chaos? Because if you're addicted to that hustle, always putting out fires, chaotic life of an entrepreneur, that's not good either. You're going to run into some problems if you're addicted to the chaos. And then why? Actually, why am I addicted to the chaos? Well, I like to be viewed as the problem solver. I like to be viewed as the fucking superhero. Well, you know, at some point, Here's the other side of the spectrum here. You have to recognize not only what you're addicted to or how the negative side of it, because I think there's positive and negative sides to everything. There is a diminishing marginal return on your effort, on your capacity, on your ability to stay on top of your game. The longer you go, the harder you go. So if you don't have, we talked about guardrails on a recent podcast. If you don't have guardrails built in place, if you don't have set rest and recovery times. If you don't have a system of support outside of your business, you might last three, five, eight, 12 years. I don't know. Like we talk about, you know, discipline and, and, and just working through the suck, but like eventually you're going to break. Eventually you're going to break. So my hope is that at least one person listening to the podcast can just ask themselves some of these tough questions and recognize why they're addicted to the work. Why are they addicted to workaholism? Why are they addicted to chaos? For me, if I ask myself that and I look back in my 20s, dude, that's all I did was try and build my gym. I tried to build my first business and thank God I did because it's paid off. But if I was still doing what I did at 25, at 35, probably wouldn't have a marriage. Probably wouldn't be, probably my kids probably wouldn't want to hang out with me. And my daughter wouldn't want me to give her what she calls double, triple time in her bed last night, rubbing her back. Daddy, can I have double, triple time? Because she wants me in her room. She wants me rubbing her back, right? But if I was so focused on work and that email that I needed to send or that, that, that lead that needed to be responded to or that sale that needed to get in, it, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be able to present myself in a very, you know, well-mannered way to my family. So if I can save someone a little bit of time, it's start having those conversations with yourself. Now, again, I'm not saying none of that is negative uh, in and of itself, but there is a point in which it can break you. Yeah. Those are good points. Definitely. I've, I've experienced them all. I, I've, uh, I've yeah. been addicted to chaos for sure. Um, it a hundred percent. I think I, I, and I'm definitely addicted to working. Um, now, how has that evolved for me in the past 10 years? I, I I view it as a positive for me now because I, I think of it more the evolution of what I've done is it's grown into like I'm addicted to like the game of business. And, and by that, I mean like I'm not addicted to what used to be like the busyness of business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I love the, the, ga the gamification of – doing business, creating profit, providing value and building. I, that, I love doing that. Um, and I love helping other people do it. And, and I love the game of investing and understanding how my $1 can kick me off 10 cents forever. Mm -hmm. And, and all of that, I think are healthy addictions, right? Yeah. And, and I think that there's balance to all of this, right? Like fitness could be a negative addi addiction. Oh, Most absolutely. people do not push it to that limit. I was there. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was there, man. That's for sure. So, so like when you say there's good and bad sides to everything, it, it certainly can be. And that's why I think just like heightened awareness and, and being – like radically honest with yourself are the keys to these things. And, and that's why I say most, most business owners that are in early in the journey and have are just like sensing their first levels of success and freedom in their business. They have just like created that, that self operating business or whatever we refer to it as. Um, 
they have a tendency to self-sabotage at that point. Mm. And like I did that over and over again um, to the point where it can be external sabotage or internal sabotage. And what I mean by that is like you go back in and you, you fuck up your business or you <laughs> fire a key employee or you create division within your own organization or just come back in and overhaul processes when everything is going well. Um, there, there's a lot of ways to go about doing that internally. And then externally is like what you think of externally, like Coke and hookers and like gambling <laughs> problems and all the external things that people may get off track doing, right? Which make you, all that does is steal your ability to grow into a, a better leader. And so like, if you recognize your role and the evolution of your role within your business and, and also just operating your business and overseeing your business and your investments or your portfolio or anything like that. If you understand the evolution of it, like you can always find your, your role in it. And I think people struggle with that when they've been defined for a very long time. And this goes back to like your identity being associated with you as the gym owner, maybe, right? Like Sean is the gym owner. Sean is the guy that's here at 5 a.m. He's here till 7 p.m. And you get a level of success where you've got a, t a staff and a team and, and then you get pulled out of that role and you've got to evolve or fuck it up. Like that, that, those are the only two choices. You have to evolve into the next level of who you are. And there's always people and forces pulling at you. And, and like the people telling you, hey, it, it's, it must be nice to not ever come to work. Or it must be nice or we miss seeing you here all the time and coaching all the classes and doing all this. Right. Yeah. It's the same in every other business. Right. If you're the if you're the head sales guy, the door knocker and like that's how you built the business in that company. Um, like and then people are your sales start to dip. You're like, man, I'm the only guy that can do this. I need to go back in there because my close rates 93 percent. And these guys are closing at 84 percent. What the fuck is wrong? And. So it, it, there is just a level of maturation that's necessary, maturing that's necessary, and also understanding that everything's going to be all right. And that's a tough, that's a tough sell to people, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it, it is a game of survival. Business is just a game of survival. I saw somebody the other day post that your business will die just like you'll die. And, and there's no way around it. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Because I have a, a saying that people hate it when I say it, but everybody's going to leave you. And, yeah, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and, and all of your customers, everybody, everybody will eventually leave you throughout your life cycle. And the last person to leave your business is you. And so it, either the business dies or you die and it goes by the wayside. And mm -hmm. like those are some harsh realities to dig into, but it, it, they, they are, in fact, realities. Yeah. And it, go ahead. Um, no, if you have something else to say, say it because I'm going to shift a little bit. I think it's affected by the seasons of life too, because who you were at 20 old when you were willing to do certain things is probably not who you are at 32 years old or 35 yeah. years old with a different family situation and a different child situation, home situation, all of it. So that that's why those internal questions are so important. Like, why the fuck am I doing this anymore? Or why why do I? Why do I find myself in the same position over and over again? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've hired staff four separate times. We've cycled them all in and all out. And I'm using that as a hypothetical. Like, so who's the common denominator in that situation? Yeah, you are. And so yeah. back to your point of like, are you seeking chaos? You have to be aware that you're the problem. And yeah, that's sometimes a tough spill pill to swallow. Yeah. What's your problem that you've been denying that you keep pointing at someone else and saying they're the problem. So you keep firing people like, because they're, they're closing 84% when you close 92%. Come on, let's learn a little something here as we grow guys. So for me, like what I was thinking about earlier and I, I stuttered a bit earlier cause I want, I had something on the tip of my tongue and I forgot how, to, you know, how I wanted to articulate it. But for me, so hopefully this resonates with maybe some, some people listening is like, I was addicted to the pursuit which I, I think when you mentioned some of your, your addictions and, and they're, they're, they're positive for sure. They're positive for sure. But the, when I look back and I look at the addict, 
the addiction I had to the pursuit of some end game. And it's because I was an athlete. So every single sport I was in, there was an end point. There was an end to the season. So it was very fucking clear what our goal was. Our goal was to win as many fucking games as possible and come out as champions at the end. And then it was rinse and repeat. So when I became an entrepreneur, I, 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 w- I was addicted to the pursuit. I'm going to put in the work because I was the freaking 16, 17, 18 year old high school student. Me and one other motherfucker, Jason, would drive to the YMCA at 4.45 in the morning. We'd be the first two people in line as they opened the door. And we worked out before school. We both had two peanut butter and jellies in the car. We'd drive to school. We'd eat the peanut butter and jellies. We'd go into high school. We'd be in school all day long. And then we would go to our sporting practice. And like, so, so I had, I was not like, I love the pursuit. I love the action I need to take to win football games, to win baseball games, to be a very good pole vaulter on the track team in high school. And then I moved on to college and it's same thing, won national championships, right? Put in the work, pursue the end goal, get the goal, came in the entrepreneurship, tons of actions to take, mm-hmm. but what does, what does fucking winning look like in entrepreneurship? <laughs> Where's the it's, fucking it's- it's just the chase though. That's right. And, that's right. And, and I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But, but no, but, but that's not where it ends. That's where early entrepreneurs don't understand. And like, I, cause I, I cycled through this for probably 10 years and you get addicted to the chase because that's how you get that dopamine response, whether it's the right. sale or whether it's the, right. like the, the next sale, the next PR revenue, whatever. Um, that's exactly but, why I'm saying it. Like that fucking yeah. that what that's what was breaking me over time because I was addicted to this pursuit that never had an end point. So mm-hmm. it's like you're chasing the carrot that's five feet in front of your face, but then at the same time you make the sale, you get three cancellations. So not only are you chasing this carrot, but someone's taking a baseball bat to your legs. <laughs> but that's why that that's why visionaries need integrators, though. Right. Because right. visionaries have a, a tendency to get stuck in that cyclical rate of churn or they're building something and burning it down or they're building it and then it goes bankrupt and then they build the next thing but the integrators can build the operations to make the thing sail yeah remember i was i was a young entrepreneur i could do it all jeff i could do it all and that didn't work very well until i figured out how to build a team so in hindsight now when i'm trying to bring this full circle for the people listening it's like i think when i look back again none of this is concrete in textbooks as like core business principles and things like absolutely has to be this way but like i'm thinking entrepreneurs their their business is the end all be all they're like my business is the asset my team is the support system and this is my way to you know build and get everything i ever wanted it's like if i look back at where i am now and and the way that i've structured my life now again if i was 22 i wouldn't change a damn thing because what i did at 22 work nonstop, took no fucking vacations, didn't go to my five year and 10 year high school reunions and didn't, you know, didn't spend money on movie tickets and didn't go on dates. Like I I wouldn't change that for the world. But now if I could have learned something a little bit faster, it was like, okay, I am the asset. I, the individual am the asset, which is at the beginning of this podcast, we talked about optimizing you, making sure you're taking care of yourself. Even if you're only working four hours a day or four hours a week, whatever. I'm the asset, my family, those that are closest to me, the individuals, for me, it's my wife and kids are my support system and my business. They're just the machine. They're just the machine. And I need to get the machine moving. Now I cannot go in there with a hammer and just break the machine all the point. All I have to do is love the machine, love the components of the machine that I'm in charge of. I could have very easily not tried to build an amazing mastermind with the tactical empire. Let's just be honest. Like I I was really happy, you know, a year ago, love my life. But I really had to hone in on myself and be like, okay, I'm happy. I don't want to say content because I'm still doing the things that need to make me a really good fucking person and father and business owner. But what I realized was I needed to do more to make a bigger impact. And that that's what my goal is in the world now. And I have to, I have to work on building the machine that allows me to fucking do that. Now, thankfully, that doesn't require me to work 40 hours a week. So when we look at when we record these podcasts, dude, I've cleared my whole fucking schedule. So, and then sometimes we record one podcast that takes 20, 25 minutes, but I've had to buffer my day and make sure that I have a whole hour prior to this podcast and a whole hour after to make sure that the, 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 the perfect 
ready to go Sean Ryder is on on here. Whereas before it would have just been another thing in the middle of my fucking schedule and I show up when it fucking hits start and I move on when it hits end. But no, like I've had to really hone in on how important this 20 to 30 minutes with you is. And this is a vital part of the machine. And the machine is building the impact. Now, once that once we're done here and that goes out into the world, I was at the gym for an hour and a half this morning. I had to go home. I got a shower, got my clothes on, made a really good breakfast, healthy ass breakfast, right? I My kid had two hour delay. I had both kids with me. I took them to the gym. There's a big playground there, right? I goofed off with them. I hung out at the daycare for an extra 10 minutes. Those are the things that got me ready to be in the right frame here to hopefully add value to the people listening to this podcast. Whereas again, guys, 10 years ago, that wouldn't have fucking happened. That's, that's great, man. That's great awareness and, and understanding <laughs> of, of yourself. Like, but uh, that's really what's necessary. And, and so like, if you understand that your role is to teach and educate and, uh, I think one of the really unique things, and this could be a whole nother topic, but like I, I consider myself a teacher at heart as well. Um, I just never went down that road because it didn't have the uh, upside that I wanted for my life. Um, which just say it. it didn't pay enough money. Just say it. Yeah. <laughs> money, and that's it's also why I don't. <laughs> that's also why wh one thing I recognized in the in the gym space very quickly too on the ability to scale mm. um, financially. So. Um, that was interesting, but at, at my core, I wanted to help people, right. And make an impact on people. And what I knew was fitness and, uh, yeah. cause of my background to an extent and then financial services. And so, I mean, I think what we're doing now is far more important than anything I've taken on before I um, is in order to, um, create a community of men who want to be better husbands, better fathers, and make a lot of money so that they can also go out and amplify their impact. I mean, it, it, which is super fun to watch and um, also very validating in what we're doing. And so in, in, in my little sliver of help there and performance there is, is I think that money is an amplifier of who these people are. So if we attract high quality people that share our values and then we can show them how to increase their wealth substantially, they will only go out and amplify that within their families and in their communities. And yeah. like that to me is like the mission. It is, it is very fulfilling. And so yeah. don't stop burning your businesses down. Stop jumping back in there and ha second guessing yourself. Like, I, I think the biggest takeaway you could get from this is like, make sure that you're asking yourself those hard questions. Like, what, why are you in the same spot you were in five years ago? Because mm -hmm. if you have access to a business, there's no, there's no excuse for that being the case. Yeah. Um, and if you don't ask yourself those questions, the world will force it upon you. And it's not going to be pretty. The universe is not pretty when it wants to shove a message down your throat. Well, I mean, it, I think part of the reason people listen to this podcast is because they want like countercultural thought processes, right? Like this isn't cookie cutter what you fucking grew up with and your parents taught you. That's right. Like we're going to teach you different things, right? And so I, I I think a great example of this that would would personify it for you business owners is that we all know baby boomer generation of entrepreneurs that are 65 to 75 years old that are still solopreneurs or still showing up every day to do all the work, them and their wife or something like that. I, I can probably name five on my hand right now that I'm thinking about that are in their 60s and 70s that are the sole operators of their businesses. And so like you don't want a 401k and 45 years in a, co a corporate cubicle. And so like, you have to ask yourself, do you want to still be doing the same exact thing you've been doing in 30 years and, and be the same person at 70, that's got to go open the store and, and make sure the money comes in each day. Cause if you're not evolving, you're not building that type of business and you owe it to the people around you to be growing and evolving so that you can create that separation in space and enjoy what you're building. Otherwise you've just bought yourself another job where That's you right. don't have a boss. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and that may be okay with some people too. 
but yeah. for for me I, like i i'm all about asking those big picture questions and and like i'm perfectly okay with if you say we're going to do this for 5 years and the reason is is because the result we're going to pop out on the back end and like i'm going to make so much fucking money over these next 5 years that i'm done done and it's going to be worth it yeah, like, that's actually, a, that's a very good point. Cause I think some people can take some things that we say or anyone else say and say, it's like, oh yeah. And we talk about compressing time. Well, well yeah. some plans, some plans fucking take time. They, they, they do take three, four five years. If you're trying to build a multi-million dollar company to exit, right? Like it's going to take time to build mm -hmm. out that business. Now in today's age, you can do it faster than plenty of people have done in the past, but there's going to be a lot of lessons. There's going to be a lot of challenges, going to be a lot of hurdles to get over. So, um, like, I like that, right? Every question you ask yourself has to be followed by a why, what, mm -hmm. why am I doing this? What is the end game? What is the North star? Where am I getting at? So, but again, build in the flexibility there too, because life, life has a, has a habit of changing. And, uh, I love, I love what we're working on now. Just to reiterate that I love, I love our, our, our focus. I love the people that we're bringing into the group. I love our message. Thoroughly enjoy recording these podcasts 30 minutes deep on this one. hopefully you guys had some takeaways. If, if something that stood out to you guys, please hit us up. I love hearing the things that you guys like about this podcast. Kind of why I went on some personal thoughts there earlier. Cause I got some good feedback on people like hearing our stories and some of the shit that we've gone through and, and the lessons that we've learned in hindsight. I think that's the point of telling you guys this. So you can just, again, learn from other people's mistakes and implement them in your life. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You're still going to have to learn the lesson, but hopefully that time frame is a lot shorter than it took Jeff and I. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I never had vices of Coke and hookers for the record either. Um, I think that's one thing people love about the podcast. They never know what examples Jeff is going to fucking use. <laughs> on, uh, the, I'm just, don't I, I, I've lived a, I lived a colorful life, but uh, I, uh, yeah, man, I think that, that the lessons on this are super important in that like you need to be deliberate and intentional on what you're building and why. Cause like you don't ever have to be stuck. Like we were going to talk about going full time in the RV, right? Like that's a weird, unconventional question that you would ask yourself. But I think that's a like I have a track record of doing that, being like I'm stuck right here. What is uncomfortable right now or what just doesn't feel right for myself or my family? And then I am willing to go completely 180 degrees in the opposite direction, even though it's maybe against all conventional norms of how people feel like living their lives or operating. Mm -hmm. And I think that people find that refreshing because if, if I could impact more people to ask themselves the same question and challenge themselves, because this goes back to my huge fucking like soapbox on more uh, mortality and how you only get one shot at this life short. Like you should do whatever you want to do, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. If as long as it doesn't harm other people or fuck with kids, like you should do whatever you want to be doing at every po point in time. So then it's just a matter of being creative enough to figure out the roadmap that can get you to that exact end result that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. yep. And so, so asking yourself, why, why, why do we feel this way? Why? Cause you change even, even you and your wife or whatever you've been married. We just had our 13th anniversary yesterday. Yeah. Like and we've been together 18 years. We're completely different people than we were when we got together. Right. And so like everybody's in that same boat. And so if you set out a plan and you went and executed on it for 10 years, you probably are a completely different person that wants completely different things. Mm -hmm. So you, you should take the time to figure out what you want. That's why I love the exercise of either a thousand days or three year vision. Like yeah. those are so important to cycle periodically because we change just so quickly. Yeah. And, and so I, I didn't really have a point there, except that like you should be doing that on a regular basis. No, Asking this yourself what you want. This is good because the topic of today's podcast came from the last three minutes of the previous podcast. And you just said something in the last three minutes of this podcast that I'm going to listen to when we post it, that's going to lead into a topic on the next podcast. So Jeff, I appreciate your time. If you guys are looking uh, to see what Jeff and his wife are going to get into here in the coming year with their RV, he's got an episode dropping here soon. Uh, I'm going to be uh, an avid listener and follower of the the blog and the social media posts of uh, a family of six with a big dog living in an RV. Yeah, guys. And follow us on the Tactical Empire on uh, YouTube as well. Give us a follow out there. Subscribe and ask us questions if you want us to throw out information. I mean, I, I know that we gloss over some of this stuff and we make it 
too macro level as far as like understanding whether it's infinite banking or real estate investing or whatever the hell else we're talking about. Um, if you want more content, put it out there, ask questions. I'm on there. I'll interact. I'll answer your questions. So um, hit us up, please. Love it. Thank Appreciate you. you guys. Thanks, brother.